So you might have noticed this week that Holy Trinity got a little bit of publicity. Um, if you get the Marietta Daily Journal, we are on the front page. And by we, I mean me. <laughs> front page of the Marietta Daily Journal. They didn't tell me that <laughs> when they called and said, uh, what are you going to be talking about in your sermon this week? And as it was only Tuesday, I was tempted to say, I have no idea, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> but, you know, you don't say that when the paper calls. <laughs> you, uh, you, you know, you, you think about it and you say something. And, and actually what they said was, are you going to talk about the Boston Marathon? Are you going to talk about what happened? Um, and it was only Tuesday, like I said, and I had gotten back from our Guatemala trip on Sunday night, so I was still a little fuzzy, but I said, well, I think so. I think it bears mentioning. And the first thing that came to my mind and what I told them and what they quoted me on saying is, well, I'm a runner. <laughs> and so, of course, because this, this thing that happened, it touched all of us, but those of us who are runners, it was pretty terrible. It's taken me a long time to be able to say I'm a runner um, because for a while I, I wanted to say, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a jogger. You know, I kind of, I kind of run. Um, Miss, Miss Judith, she runs. <laughs> she, she actually runs. Um, and some of you do too. Um, and and I, I run, but, but I run slowly and I run for fun and I run for health and all those other things. But it's, it's taken me a long time. But, but now I just go ahead and say I'm a runner. I'm part of those crazy people that you see on, you know, well, for me, it's Saturday morning, it's not Sunday morning, but part of those crazy people that you see out um, because I enjoy it and because I love it. Now I run um, because I get to talk to one of my best friends while I'm running, my friend Kathy, um, who was, you know, I told you guys she was sort of brought back from the, uh, a serious health scare, and so we get to run together again. And the other reason why I run is races. I will never, I'll go ahead and say it, um, I will never run in the Boston Marathon. It will never happen, but I love races. There's something about um, running with a whole bunch of people that I, I caught on to really early in my, in my running life, because when you run with a bunch of people all together, um, when you're going towards the same goal, um, no matter how fast you're going, no matter if you're walking or jogging or, you know, there's those awesome wheelchair racers, whatever you're doing, there's something about going towards the same goal and being encouraged by everybody else that to me is a little like going to church. When we're all together, we're all going towards the same goal. There's something like that when your, your competitors are also your encouragers. There's something wonderful about being in a race like that, and that's why I think what happened on Monday was particularly horrifying, because races are so beautiful. They're such a wonderful expression of, of our humanity, and people have been running for a long, long time, and, and so many of us find, find joy and find health and, and find just great enjoyment in running races. And so when the Marietta Daily Journal said, what are you going to talk about? I thought about faith and, and hope and, and those things that, that I said, but I also thought, you know, it's because I'm a runner that I really feel like this is something that, that we need to mention, that we, that we need to talk about. But what I didn't tell them, because like I said, it was only Tuesday when they called. <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't do my sermon really till Thursday. <laughs> Sometimes Saturday, if I'm being real honest. <laughs> what I didn't tell them which is what didn't occur to me until I was, I was really reading and, and translating and doing all those things that I do on Thursday, um, was that Philip, in our scripture, was also a runner. Can you all believe that? On this weekend, in our scripture, Philip, the apostle, was also a runner. And I had to look it up a bunch of times and make sure, and somebody's even written an article on it and all this stuff. Philip was a runner. In the Old Testament, prophets we're often runners, because how else are you going to get that message out there? And they weren't like me, joggers. They were serious runners, because they wanted to get that message out into the desert. They wanted to get that message from town to town. And so prophets, I read somewhere, prophet was often synonymous, the same thing as runner. How cool is that? that prophets were runners who had to run to carry that message. They couldn't drive to a, to a place in a car, so they had to run. 
And so Philip, it says in this, in this text, in the manner of prophets, the spirit told him to get up and go for a run. <laughs> and those of us who are runners know sometimes that's exactly how it happens. <laughs> We're tempted to say, no, nah, not today. My couch is super comfortable. <laughs> but sometimes the Spirit tells you, get up, go for a run. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm working on a particularly difficult sermon or text, the Spirit says, go away from your computer, get up, go for a run. <laughs> and that's how everything percolates and, and finally comes to fruition. So Philip uh, was told by the Spirit to get up and go for a run on a wilderness road. So the Spirit told him to get up and go for a trail run. So Philip gets up and he goes for a run on this road and he's running and he comes alongside a chariot. And so Philip, not a jogger, a serious runner, he's running as fast as a chariot. So he's running right alongside the chariot and he hears someone reading scripture inside. And the person is reading the prophet Isaiah. And so he, he yells up to the chariot. He's still running, right? <laughs> He's still running alongside the chariot. And he yells up to the chariot, do you understand what you're reading? He's still running. <laughs> and the person in the chariot says, well, no, I, I don't really understand what I'm reading. How can I understand? I need someone to help me interpret this. So Philip's still running and says, you know, I, I could do that. And so this, this Ethiopian man pulls him up into the chariot, and now he gets a little, little water break, a little rest break. And they talk about what this scripture means. And the, the Ethiopian man is saying, well, this passage that I'm reading about someone suffering and dying, what does this mean? Is this about Isaiah, or is this about someone else? And Philip thinks, I know this answer. <laughs> it's a children's sermon answer. He's talking about Jesus. And what a wonderful opportunity. I think at this moment, Philip knows exactly why the Spirit got him up to go for this run down the wilderness road, because he says, I can tell you exactly who this is about. I know him. And he tells him of Jesus' suffering and Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection. He's telling him all these things and about how, how followers of Jesus are baptized. And then uh, the Ethiopian says something really beautiful. He says, you know, there's some water right over there. Why can't I just go get baptized right now? Why can't you baptize me? And I know Philip wasn't a Lutheran because the first thought in my head, <laughs> we have a baptism at 11 o'clock this morning, the first thought in my head was, well, you don't have a certificate. <laughs> you don't have a candle. <laughs> You don't have that little special cloth to wipe off your head. You can't do a baptism without those things, right? <laughs> well, of course not. <laughs> of course you can do a baptism. Wherever there is water. I've been asked this by someone before. Can you just baptize me right now? And I had to squelch all my Lutheran instincts. Wait, I can't. It's... Of course we can. Of course we can. There's water here. We keep water here all the time, just in case. Someone wants to be baptized. Y'all know we don't have any requirements. We don't ask that anyone do anything special. We baptize babies, for heaven's sake. They don't do anything to deserve this water. And so Philip, whatever was going on in his head, was able to say, of course, let's go. And they both ran into the water, and Philip baptized him right there that day, no certificate, no nothing. And they got up out of the water, and it says the spirit snatched Philip away. The Ethiopian never saw him again. It says the spirit snatched him away, but I wonder, I wonder if he just took off running. <laughs> just running to the next town so fast that no one could see where he was going because he was running on maybe to deliver the gospel to someone else. We still do this, this beautiful thing. We still remind each other when bad things happen, like on Monday, it seems like thing after thing is just weighing on our hearts, these tragedies in our world. We can still remind each other that we're baptized. We can still remind each other of the scriptures. You know, I was looking up, um, it was in, not the Marietta Daily Journal, but in the, in the AJC, and they had a list of all, um, all the domestic bombings that had been recorded. And it started in 86, but that's 1886. 
is when these things started. Is when people were disgruntled and, and decided to take it out on some innocent people. These things have been happening for a long time. I would say ever since Philip went for his run and even before. But we still remind each other that we're people of hope. And we remind each other that we're people of the gospel and of resurrection. I have run, uh, walked, jogged, uh, whatever you want to call it, two marathons. Marathons are like children to me. Two is more than enough. <laughs> when people ask if I want uh, any more of either, I just say, no, nope, two is good. I'm good. Um, in my first marathon, uh, it was at Disney World. And uh, if you think Disney World is a happy, pretty place, it is, but not enough to carry you painlessly through a marathon, 26 <laughs> miles. <laughs> I was on about the 24th mile. And that is, you're in a bad place, the 24th mile, if you've run a marathon. It, it's a bad mental place sometimes. And uh, I was on about the 24th mile, and I had been out there for hours. I'm a slow runner. And somebody uh, came up behind me and said, I just wanted to thank you for your shirt. And I said, my shirt? <laughs> you know, 24 miles in, your mind, doing crazy things. And, she said, yeah, just thank you so much for what you have written on your shirt. So I, I brought the shirt to, to show you guys. And I said, um, I said, Beth? Because <laughs> I would kind of forgotten my own name. <laughs> um, that's what happens sometimes. But she said, um, no, the back. <laughs> I thought, oh, the back, right. <laughs> I had forgotten, um, totally forgotten that I had written words from the prophet Isaiah on the back of my shirt um, for my marathon. Um, my, my stepdad had given me this verse, and um, it's, it's a special one to runners, and I had written it on the back of my shirt, and you guys, I had totally forgotten by mile 24 that this was on my shirt. Completely forgotten. It says, those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And she said, thank you. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> I had forgotten, and it was right on the back of my shirt. And I needed to hear those words right now. I needed to hear them even though they were coming from me. I needed to be reminded of those words. And I thought, we all have this cross. We're all marked with this cross on our forehead, right? But we forget. When stuff happens, we forget, all of us, that we're people of hope. We forget that we have a cross that doesn't mean the bad things don't happen. In fact, it means that the worst can happen, and God can still raise us up. And so all of us, when we're in this, we're all in this race together, whether we run or walk or crawl or whatever it is that we do, we're all in this together as baptized people. And what our, what our goal is in this race is to remind each other that we are baptized. That no matter what happens, that we have hope. That we have this cross marked on our forehead and we run alongside each other to remind each other of this when we forget. And we do. We remind each other that we'll run and not grow weary. That we'll walk and not be faint. Amen.